All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to talk about uh, what happened at the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so we're going to start here in Matthew 27. Okay, so in Matthew 27. We're going to start at verse 52, when Jesus came out, yeah, 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 when he came out of the tomb, he did, that's right, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right, so I'm going to start at verse 52, and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints, yeah, you want to read it, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many all right so what happened here very simply jesus rose from the dead and uh, when he rose from the dead Yeah, uh, the others that were in the graves. <laughs> they rose from the dead. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I apologize. So, when Jesus died... Let's start there. Okay. Alright, so, let's start at 50. Alright, when... when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temples rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of their graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. All right, so Jesus died. And then he rose from the grave. And when he rose from the grave, so also did many of the saints. Also came many of the saints came out of the graves and um, appeared unto many. Now that's all we know. All right, or that's all the information we're given. Okay, so it's interesting here. The point I want to make is that Jesus only ascended to heaven. Okay, those that came out of the graves, they did not ascend to heaven with Jesus. And that's what I want to show here, and I want to make it real simple for you to see. And, and there's, uh, let's just go with one example. Uh, I was thinking about, you remember, um, what was that, Samuel? Who came out of the grave, and, oh, what was that? I, you know what, I'm going to, I forget the wording of that. Um, I forget. I forget. Somewhere talks about. I think it was Samuel that rose from the dead, right? Let's see. He was disturbed. Let's see. First, let's go to. Let's go to first. Samuel 28, and he was disur disturbed, where am I at here, he was disturbed from his, uh, essentially his death sleep, right, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, you don't say, no kidding, 
Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. So, uh, anyways, that's the word right there. Disquieted me. Okay. Why has thou disquieted me to bring me up? All right. So Samuel's another example of somebody that came up out of the grave. <laughs> And, all right, okay, so Lazarus also being another one, when he, you know, he was dead for a few days, and and they're like, well, what are you going to do? And this guy stinks, so you're going to bring him up out of the grave? Here we go. Uh, and Jesus said, take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinks. For he has been dead four days. Well, Jesus uh, cried out and called him up out of the grave. Okay. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him. And let him go. All right, so this is an example of somebody coming up out of the grave. All right, I've given you two examples, even a third one. Here, where these, when Jesus resurrected, uh, the saints, many bodies of the saints also came up out of the grave and appeared unto many now this is important that is absolutely true no question about it what is not true is when people say that they ascended to heaven with Jesus okay so let's go to uh, Matthew, or I'm sorry, Luke 24. And um, let's see. And he laid them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. Now, when he was carried up into heaven, it was him. There's nothing in the scripture that suggest that other people with Jesus ascended up into heaven at this time. And it's very clear in 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept. See, now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So there's a clear difference between Jesus Christ and Samuel, for example. Or Lazarus is another example. Or the saints as a third example. Clear difference. All right, now, <laughs> the only way You can make that argument that people ascended up to heaven with Jesus after he rose from the dead is to say that the Bible is wrong. That's the only way. You can't reconcile 
this at all. Yeah, you have to pick and choose. And you essentially have to say this here is wrong. And thereby making yourself God. Really, that's the only way. Right? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all dies, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. All right, so it's clear as day, man, it's clear as day. So nobody resurrects and ascends until Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There's no way around it. Absolutely no way around it. Every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. So let me let's go to Daniel tw uh, twelve real quick and compare this. Okay, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is talking about the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. This is not one dispensation of many dispensations. You're teaching a foreign religion, a, a comic book religion, really, to suggest that there are many dispensations of resurrections that is ridiculous it's utterly ridiculous and it, contrary to everything that we read in the bible now jesus <laughs> it's everywhere it really is everywhere in the bible so let's go to matthew 13 and consider the parable of the wheat and the tares all right so the wheat in the tares, they are growing together, and then harvest comes. Right? You don't, you don't have a harvest like a pre-harvest, and then a mid-harvest and a post-harvest and all that sort of stupid stuff. Right? There is one harvest, and that's at the end of the world. Just like a farmer, there's the harvest. When the crops have all grown, then it's harvest season. All right. You're essentially making Jesus out to be stupid by teaching all this stuff when you claim that some people resurrected at, and ascended to heaven at different times. It's only one time. It's at the end of the world. It's judgment day. All right, the harvest is the end of the world. All right, now this is pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Okay. Now, let's uh, let's do this here. You think about Matthew twenty-seven, and it says here. That many bodies of the saints which slept arose. All right, so let's go to John chapter 3. And we see in verse 13, No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Jesus is the only one that has ascended to heaven. Now, consider... David. We'll go to Acts chapter 2, and it plainly says, Ooh, David is not ascended into the heavens. Right? So, again, you have to make this weird argument 
that David was not one of the bodies of the saints and that he, he didn't ascend to heaven, but other people ascended to heaven. It, I mean, you really have to get weird about this whole teaching in order to try to substantiate it because there's nothing in the Bible to support this teaching that there are people in heaven right now. All right, now I've gone over, I know, I know people, right? I know you're going to, there's going to be some people that say, well, what about Eli um, Elias or Enoch? Let's say, let's go, let's go to Enoch. Uh, let's go to Enoch. And uh, we learned that he was translated. Translated. In Hebrews 11, for uh, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. All this means, there's only one possible meaning, and that is that he was translated from life to death. That he should not see death so he did not go through the pain of dying okay that's all that means nowhere are you going to see this idea that Enoch ascended to heaven and is now in heaven Again, you have to make Jesus out to be a liar. At the very least, call him ignorant and stupid. Just, I mean, if that's what you believe, be honest. But it, I'm telling you, it's not consistent with everything that we read in the Bible. And then Elijah's the other one. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, let's do it this way. All right, so Elijah, we see that he God took him away in a whirlwind. And the first time he takes Elijah and he places him in another land, another area. All right, and then the second time, um, it doesn't say where he was taken. Right, so you're going way too far out of the way to suggest that Elijah was taken up to heaven, and again, you're making Jesus out to be a liar. Okay, the and these references here in Second Kings chapter two, it's not referring to being um, resurrected and transformed into the glorified bodies. It's just up in the air. That's all that really means. Okay? It's not a contradiction to what Jesus says in John chapter 13. Alright, so I think that's all I wanted to share with you, okay? Uh, well, no, wait, let me go here real quick. Oh, I forget where I'm... Oh, no, 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 no. Here, I have to do it this way. One second here. I want to show you one, another verse here. Oops. All right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven... We are caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Notice there that there's no mention of meeting the saints. All right? And then so also in 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I show you a mystery that we shall not all sleep, 
but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Notice there's no mention of these saints already being resurrected and in the air with Jesus when he comes. All right, let's go back to Jude. And there's an old saying that Enoch prophesied saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all. That's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Let's do it this way. Let's go to, I mean, I just showed you how we're going to be lifted up in the air. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15, let's go to Revelation 20, and we see that the unsaved will compass the camp of the saints about the beloved city, that's Jerusalem, which is above, all right? So we're above, we're in the air with the Lord. So he cometh with ten thousands of his saints. That's us. It's not, it's not a different group of people, man. It's us that are saved. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all. If you're not one of these guys, then you're one of these guys, okay? It's that simple. You don't want to be one of these guys, all right? You want to be up in the air with the Lord when he comes. You want to be transformed into your into the glorified body the rebuilt temple that Jesus has made for us. It's really not hard. You got two choices in the book of Jude, in this prophecy. Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches with ungodly sinners have spoken against him. You don't want to be one of the ungodly at the end of the world. You want to be up in the air with the Lord. All right, so there's no way to spin this to say that there are other people in heaven right now. There's no way. If you want to call Jesus Christ a liar, that's on you. I'm telling you, the Bible is true. <laughs> 